Hey everybody, Jake here, and today we're going to take a look at the Moonman Wankai Mini. This has been a very popular fountain pen, and I was excited to take a look at it. I'm not all that blown away, but we'll go over all of that in just a moment. Let's go ahead and go on to the size comparisons first. So here it is closed, uh, capped. At the bottom we have the Wankai, right above that we have the Kaveco Lilliput, and then the Kaveco Sport, and then at the top we have the Moonman M2. I was going to include the Pilot um, Metropolitan, but it's roughly the same size as the M2, both capped and uncapped. And here it is uncapped. You can see it lines up very, very closely with the with the Lilliput. Um, it's a little bit shorter than the Sport, and obviously it's going to be shorter than the M2. But it's a very, very tiny pen. Um, if you're just looking at the body, it is definitely... Sp and here it is posted. So you can see it's a little bit shorter than the Lilliput. It's a little bit shorter than the All Sport, and it's about the exact same size as the, um, the M2. So again, it's a pocket pen, but once you post it, it does come up to a full length, and it matches very nicely with the rest of the pens on the table here. All right, on to what I like about it. So the very first thing is the design. It's a very, very interesting take on a pocket pen. As you notice in the size comparisons, it's a little bit thicker than the Lilliput, but it's about the same length. Um, it's very, very, very small, and I could definitely see this being usable in a pocket. Um, I didn't carry it that, that way. I don't really carry anything in my pocket apart from Lilliput, but that's because it's made of metal. This would get torn to pieces by my wallet because it is also metal. But if you have a use case for this where you can toss it in your pocket, I can certainly see that being a viable option and doesn't take up too much more space than any other pen, um, at least in the pocket sized range would. The design's very interesting in that way. And then the body and the cap are about the same length um, when closed. The cap is a little bit longer, which is, you know, unique. Um, it's somewhat reminiscent of the All Sport, but it's actually beats it out a little bit in terms of ratio. And even when posted, it's it's just a very unique design. It's very eye-catching. There's nothing else out there that's quite like it. Um, some people may not like it, but visually I find it very appealing. The swirls and the acrylic have a nice depth to them, which you can see. They're not just printed on there. They are actually indeed a, a sort of a, a 3D. And perhaps you can actually see that best on the back where you go to post it. You can see the, the white ribbons there. And if you turn it to the side or from the top, you can actually see, you know, where they layered that acrylic so it's a, it's a very unique design and for the price it's a very very interesting take on a on a pen you won't really find much out there that's this unique in this price range the length is nice so again it's about the same size as, as the little put when closed I actually believe it's a little bit shorter it is by maybe about a third of an inch probably a quarter of an inch third of an inch so the length is nice on it and when posted, it does come up to a, a very usable length as well. I don't have any issues um, writing with it or anything like that. It sits in my hand fairly well. The ink capacity is also nice. And this is, you know, usually you, you kind of lose out on this when you get a smaller pen. But this pen is meant to be eyedroppered. So although they do include cartridges with it, you are probably going to eyedropper this. They also include an eyedropper in the package which we'll go over in just a minute. And it holds quite a bit of ink, probably close to uh, a milliliter and a half, two milliliters, which is it's very, very nice. I don't have an exact measurement on that, but it'll hold quite a bit of ink, especially for a pocket pen, which in my opinion is something that you're probably going to use very seldom. Just kind of pull out, take a note and go on. Um, this is gonna last you quite a while. Let's go ahead and take a look at the packaging actually, because that's very, very nice with this pen as well, um, in regards to the price at least. So it looks very, very similar to the um, M2 packaging. It's this kind of frosted acrylic, or not, probably not acrylic, probably just some cheap plastic. Um, so in the packaging, you'll get the pen, of course. You will get an eyedropper. This one is stained because I just filled this pen. And you get these ink cartridges. It's just six little um, black ink cartridges, but they're packaged very well. And you could certainly use this box for um, future ink cartridge storage. 
actually these two together if you didn't want to eyedropper it would make a, a very interesting pocket combination so you could always have your ink on you and you could always have your pen so it's it's very nice of them to include that and the packaging is kind of a, a, a tough foam it's very very nice packaging for the price um, certainly when you buy pens from American or German companies you're really not going to get this level of packaging for the 10 to 15 dollars that you're going to spend on this pen it posts very well um, it's expected to post and because of how wide this is it's very very easy to post on there now with the the reason I bring this up is because the little put is about the same size and it also screws to post but because of how narrow it is back here it can oftentimes be a little difficult um, if you don't take a moment and line it up like I just did like if you're just coming at it from you know it's gonna take you quite a few turns to get it posted the Wonkai posts very very quickly um, it makes it much easier to take out of your pocket post it really quickly and write um, that being said writing without this pen posted is going to be very very difficult um, at least for me <laughs> um, if you get really 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 close up you may be able to do something with it but I, I would imagine most people are going to have to post this pen and the posting is very nice so that doesn't really bother me too much the flow on the nib is wonderful um, I've tried a few inks in this the first one that I tried um, was dye mine soft mint and there were some flow issues I, I hadn't washed out the pen so that might be it so I emptied out that ink flushed it and tried a few other inks currently and there's pilot Roshizuku Momiji which you'll see in the writing sample flows extremely extremely well no skips or hard starts or anything like that I did experience skips and hard starts with the soft mint the dye mine ink and I've used that ink in other pens and it forms just fine so I would recommend if you get this pen to flush it out first just in case just to avoid any issues that that may cause um, after I did that though it it writes very reliably the o-ring that is included is very nice as well so again you can use this pen with the uh, the cartridges that they send or you can eyedropper it and I'm not going to take it apart so you can see but there's actually an o-ring right in here um, that seals this pen very well now this pen I'll tilt it back and forth so you can see there is no silicone grease on the threads the o-ring seals it well enough to not need that at least as far as I can tell so far however I will say you should probably use silicone grease anyway just in case especially if you're going to have this pen in your pocket you want to take every possible precaution but it is nice that they toss an o-ring in there um, just to make it a little bit more secure for you when you do decide to eyedropper this as most people probably are going to on to the neutral first thing is the price um, it's okay it's not great it's 10 to 15 dollars depending on what color you want things like that I've seen some of the finishes available for eight um, it's up to you they're all shipping from China pretty much so they're going to take a while to get here I know you can get these off of Amazon with prime shipping but they go up quite a bit to a little over twenty dollars they do also make these in ebonite which is originally what I was going to get but those are closer to the forty to fifty fifty dollar range and this pen is okay, but I'm very, very glad I didn't spend $40 on an ebonite version of it. I haven't tried an ebonite pen, so I'm, I'm excited to try one in the future, but this is uh, not a pen I would spend $50 on. $15 is, it's okay. It's okay for that price. What else is okay is the nib. It's, it's all right. As I mentioned, the flow is very, very consistent. It's a wonderful, wonderful, reliable rider. But as far as the feel and writing, it's not fantastic. This is a uh, fine nib, which you may or may not be able to see there. And it's very, very scratchy. Um, the tines are aligned, and normally I would take the time to smooth out a nib. But this one is not just feedback. It's literally so unpleasant that I don't enjoy writing with this pen at all. Um, so I may smooth it out at some point, but I just I wanted to leave it as it is for the review. You may be able to pick up some of the sound during the writing sample. It's 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 not like platinum or sailor feedback. It's literally scratchy, and I, I'm not enjoying it at all. That being said, you can certainly swap this nib out 
with the one that comes with your M2. Um, they do appear to be the same size, so if you want to try that, you certainly can. You'd probably have a better writing experience with it. The two nibs that came with my M2 are actually both fantastic. I love them both. This pen um, kind of disappointed me in that way. I, honestly, I was expecting to have the nib as one of the highest points on this pen because for the M2 it was. The nibs were fantastic. This one was a, a bit of a letdown, to say the least. It does write reliably now, but the performance isn't quite where I want it, and I really don't feel like having to take the time to fix all these nibs. On to the dislike. So a few of these are nitpicks, a few of these are big issues. Um, nitpick first, there are a few dark spots in the acrylic, which you can see there, there's two of them. Those do not wipe away, those are embedded in the acrylic. There are several more um, throughout the pen. There's tiny little minuscule things, but they're there and they're noticeable, especially on these white um, ribbons. It's it's not great. Kind of disappointed that they did it in this color. If they were going to leave imperfections, you know, in the in the acrylic itself, that's a little disappointing. Granted, you know, price it's not a huge thing, but it's it's something. Um, the other nitpick. I don't know how well you can see it. Um, let's see. So you can see the side of the pen there. Now, as I go to rotate it, if I can get it to focus, there we go. You can kind of see a, a bit of a, a slightly darker or off color line here. And that goes all the way down. Now that, I'll kind of rotate it so you can see it's a strip, maybe, you know, an eighth of an inch, six of an inch long. Or wide rather and it goes the entire length of the body now what that is interestingly enough is a flat spot I don't know why I don't know if it's an issue with the acrylic injection or something like that but it's it's not super super noticeable in this darker ink but on the diamond soft mint which is a fairly brighter color um, it was noticeable and as you can see I can put the pen like this and it will sit and not roll at all that's usually how I rest the pen actually is I'll find that flat spot and just set it down. Um, it's useful for that, but aesthetically it's a little bit annoying and um, it sort of detracts from the pen. You Once you notice it, you can kind of always see it and you know exactly where it is. It's not a huge thing, but it's it's there and with this pen, uh, appearance was a large reason why I purchased it and I was disappointed to see those two little, two little things wrong with it. The section isn't fantastic. If you have very small fingers and you grip very, very close up, I think you'll be fine. Um, my grip is a bit more relaxed. My thumb kind of sits along the side of the pen. So for me, it isn't huge, a huge issue either because my thumb kind of transcends this massive step down. But if you hold your pen back here or something like that, I can definitely see it being an issue. If you have a way to try this pen out before purchasing it or Something along those lines, I would recommend it because ergonomically, it's not great. Um, this is not a comfortable pen to write with for me. And the the step down doesn't bother me a ton. It's not super sharp, but it's there and it's noticeable. And for some reason, the angle that it sits my thumb at is extremely, extremely uncomfortable. Um, back here in the joint of my hand, it kind of makes it feel like it's going to cramp almost. Not sure what, what's wrong with it, but long writing sessions with this pen irritate me to say the least um, it's just not a pleasant writing experience and a big reason for me using fountain pens and spending all this money is to have a pleasurable writing experience so for the week or so where I carry this pen and used it every day it was almost a form of torture and I was very excited to um, stop using it at that point that was about a month ago I've come back to it today because I'm using it at the moment um, just for today and I figured I'd go and do the review of it but returning to it, I, I see why I wanted to put it down. The ergonomics just aren't there, and for a fountain pen, a pen that you're going to be using a lot and that you're spending money on, and 10 to $15 is a lot for a pen. Not to us necessarily, but to a lot of people it is. And for something so big to be wrong with the pen at that price, it's kind of unacceptable. All right, on to the writing sample. So again, this is the... Moon Man.
Wan Kai Mini. And it's a fine nib, which is actually the only one that I could find this pen offered in. Um, I really like the nibs on the M2 a lot better, and I'm kind of, I kind of wish that they had offered a bit more of a variety with this, but it's it's okay-ish, I guess. And the ink, for those of you curious, as I mentioned earlier, is Pilot Iroshizuku. That's horrible. Momiji. So one thing about this nib that actually surprised me is there's a fair amount of line variation that you can coax out of it. It is a steel nib. It is not a gold nib, although it is gold colored. It's surprising. Um, just to give you a bit of an idea about the flow as well, you can see it's very consistent. No um, skips or anything like that. Um, the first part was my fault, but once you get fast riding, it's not an issue either. But I'll go ahead and uh, show you what I mean by the line variation. So we'll do a reverse riding, riding line there. And also, by the way, the reverse riding on this pen is actually somewhat consistent and reliable, and it's not scratchy. It's actually more pleasant to write with the uh, with the back side of this nib than it is for me to write the normal way. Okay, so reverse writing line there, normal line, and we'll do a line with some pressure. And you can see there's line variation. You can get a decent amount for a steel nib, honestly. It's, it's very soft, it's very pliable. Um, it does not feel like a gold nib or a, titan or a titanium nib, but it's it's fairly pleasant to use, and the bit of flex it does offer is not bad at all. All right, on to the conclusion. So for me, this pen isn't even an entry into the pocket pens that I would recommend. Um, I would actually skip this one entirely. It's it's interesting. They, they try to make it, um, I, I think, a little bit larger to help with ergonomics, but for me, it does the exact opposite. Um, the Caveco Lilliput is a very thin pen. It's not amazing ergonomically, but I vastly prefer it to using this one. And this pen's probably biggest competition is going to be the Caveco Sport. It's just a tiny, tiny bit longer, maybe, you know, half an inch or so, or maybe an inch, but it's it's consistently more narrow um, you know no matter which way you look at it it's more pleasant in the pocket it's faceted so it doesn't roll this one does not have a roll stop when you uncap it you can use it without having to post it when you post it it's balanced extremely well the section is wonderful it's very very nice their nibs are at least in the medium and fine they write very well. I've had overpolished broads, but that's about it. So I think for the price you're getting this pen, I would honestly save up a couple more dollars and just get a Caveco Sport, um, or maybe you know get the the M2 uh, Moonman M2. This pen is much much better, and it's at right in the similar price range. So if you don't have to have a pocket pen, you just want to try something from this brand. Try this one. This is a much much better pen. It holds more ink if that matters to you at all. The section's much more pleasant. The nib writing experience is fantastic, and it looks really cool. So unless you're just, you know, dedicated to this design, this color, whatever, um, maybe look somewhere else for your pocket pen or fountain pen fix in general. All right, thanks for tuning in, guys. Don't forget to check out all my other stuff. And I'm actually going to be having a giveaway coming up soon. So make sure to keep your eye out on my pin videos. Thanks, guys. Bye.